Today in Pittsburgh, it wasn't the Channel 4 Weather Center. It was the DiNardo Weather Center, Joe's name synonymous with weather and safety. The chief meteorologist keeping the viewers ahead of whatever Mother Nature was heading their way. If we can look that sense of serving the public in Joe's blood. Born and raised in Martins Ferry, Ohio, Joe graduated from Wheeling Central Catholic High School in West Virginia. He majored in math and physics at Duquesne University, graduating in 1953. The next year, Joe earned a master's degree in meteorology from the University of Chicago and then served as an officer in the United States Air Force. He was promoted to the rank of commander of the Weather Detachment at the Greater Pittsburgh Air Force Base. Following his honorable discharge, Joe opened a weather service business with his Air Force friend, David McFarland, and began advising KDKA's weather personalities before making appearances on air. Here's kind of messed up. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, nice. It's the widest part in Allegheny County. In 1969, WTAE President and General Manager John Kynamikes hired Joe and news anchor Paul Long and the two became longtime on-air partners and the face of Channel 4. A lady from Apollo who is tired of the snow suggests we ship Joe DiNardo off to Arizona where they didn't get any. The lady would be surprised where I'd like to ship DiNardo, but we're stuck with him. Here's Joe DiNardo. Well, Mr. Long, let me say I understand what you're trying to say, but uh, may I say when you land at your proposed destination, there's one thing you'll not have to worry about. That's snow and ice on the runways. Joe took pride in using his math and science skills to provide accurate forecasts and was recognized throughout his career for keeping people safe. Joe was cited by the National Weather Service for alerting Pittsburghers in advance of the destructive tornado here on Mount Washington in 1998. How you doing? Another DiNardo trademark Joe climbing into Sky 4, flying to hundreds of schools throughout western Pennsylvania for his famous school visits. Joe, very much like a rock star, bringing his love of science and weather to hundreds of thousands of students. Get set, go! His charity work may be his biggest Pittsburgh legacy. A passionate promoter of the Special Olympics. For many years, Joe hosted his celebrity golf and softball tournaments in St. Mary's, PA encouraging young athletes, building a community of supporters, and raising thousands of dollars for the program. Call 412 Joe was the leader of the team that created Project Bundle Up, the partnership with the Salvation Army that has raised more than $14 million, putting warm winter outerwear on more than 275,000 of our children and seniors in Western PA. Absolutely. Over the decades, Joe hosted our telethons and shopping days with the kids. All the golf outings, mini golf tournaments, and dinner fundraisers, all to keep our neighbors bundled up. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, look at these. Western Pennsylvania showed their gratitude to Joe following his lung cancer diagnosis. Viewers raining down their love on Joe, showering him with mounds of get well cards and letters. Joe not only successfully recovered and returned to his DiNardo Weather Watch Center, he became an advocate for cancer research, making charity fundraising appearances. John, where are you going? All right. In 2002, Joe carried the Olympic flame through the streets of Pittsburgh as the torch made its way to Salt Lake City for the Winter Games. Joe passing the torch to his fellow cancer survivor, Pittsburgh Penguins legend Mario Lemieux. Most important to Joe, his family he treasured above all else. His beloved wife, Dolores, his sons, Doug and Jeff, and his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Joe never missed his son's football games or wrestling matches. So dedicated to his family and his community of Moon Township, Joe became the chairman of the Parks and Recreation Board, where he volunteered for decades, helping Moon bring multiple parks and sports fields for families as Moon's population grew. In 2012, township supervisors showed their gratitude by renaming the road that runs through Moon Park, Joe DiNardo Way. How you doing? All right. Even though he officially retired from WTA in 2005, he continued to be a part of the Channel 4 family, often lending his voice to help the less fortunate and continuing to mentor meteorologists, sharing his experience throughout his 45-year career on air in Pittsburgh. Joe was honored by the Mid-Atlantic Chapter of the Emmys with its highest honor, the Governor's Award, for his lifetime achievement. This lifelong journey has surrounded me with friends that I've worked with day after day, year after year. 
I've been a very blessed individual. A lifetime of service to his community, his country, his family. Every step of the way, Joe DiNardo kept Pittsburgh protected, working to keep us safe. beautiful tribute to Joe and all of you are encouraged to be with us to say goodbye to Joe DiNardo and these are the funeral arrangements we've learned from his family. Visitation will be held Monday and Tuesday from 2 to 4 and 6 to 8 at Huntsman Funeral Home on Coriopolis Heights Road in Moon Township. Joe's funeral mass will be celebrated Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock at St. Margaret Mary Church in Moon. In lieu of flowers, the family is suggesting donations in Joe's name to WTAE's Project Bundle Up, Care of the Salvation Army. You know, the legacy that Joe DiNardo left here at WTAE is a vast one. And one man helped to pave the path. His name is John G. Conomikes. He was the president and general manager here in 1969 when Joe was hired. You'll be hearing his name a lot in this hour because he played a key role in bringing Joe here to Channel 4 and established a friendship that continued for decades. He's a guy that's going to be sorely missed. I mean, you talk about Pittsburgh, I mean, and you talk about broadcasting, you can't do it without Joe. And, uh, you know, what a special guy he is. John G. Conomikes knew exactly what kind of special guy. That's why he targeted Joe as his priority to hire when he was promoted to president and general manager of WTAE. There's just never been another one like him. And, you know, his career in Pittsburgh speaks for itself. Uh, Joe said it would, you know, people still talk about it today. And uh, to do 600 visits to schools is phenomenal. And, uh, just special. Mr. Conomike said Joe was not only a masterful scientist, mathematician, forecaster, and broadcaster, he personified excellence in every phase of his life. I don't know where I could even start and finish on that. I mean, you know, Joe is Joe, whether, whether it's his family, where no one was a better parent and husband to everything he did with his family, what he did in the community, whether it was uh, Project Bundle Up or other things that were going on numerous other things that he was always involved in and you know really back in the people at the station he called hiring joe the best decision of his career uniting joe with another conomikes hire legendary anchor paul long and they had amazing rapport paul was saying well that was a heck of a forecast uh, you gave us for today last night joe you know I said, what's the matter? You didn't like it? No, it was terrific. He says, I woke up this morning, I went outside and had three inches of partly cloudy in my driveway. But that's the type of, that's, that's the type of stuff they used to do. Mr. Conomike says he's thinking of Joe's two sons and his entire family and how Joe's life on and off the air should serve as an example for young journalists. Someone he said he still would have kept on the air today. Even when Joe wanted to retire, if I was still just running the station, I'd have never let him retire. You know, I'd, I'd have kept him on the air. I mean, there, there's just not another one like him. I'd love to see Joe on Facebook Live every day, huh? <laughs> you know, we'll be talking about our memories of Joe DiNardo throughout this hour. So many of us here worked very closely with Joe. And among those who work very closely with Joe is, of course, Chronicle host Sally Wigan. She joins us now to talk about some of your memories with him. Yeah, I, I, I worry I worry about John because they were so connected. And, uh, and you know, Joe could give it to you. <laughs> and you had to know how to give it back. I mean, I can remember after he retired, we'd be talking about the Steelers. And, and I would be talking to him on my cell phone drive home and we would be screaming at each other and I thought I'm gonna drive off the road and probably sometimes I almost did but 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 you know what he could give it to John and John would give it right back because they had such a mutual respect for one another the other thing is his affection for Paul Long was so touching but it was also so funny um, he would do things to tease him and I remember once he and I, and I think Don and Billy, they, they hid Paul's car. <laughs> and, so, and then they stood up in the newsroom, and well, I think I'm getting this right, it may be a little bit confused, and watched him walk all around the parking lot trying to find his car with his head down like that. It, it was the kind of thing they did. There's so many stories they tell. Another time, I think Joe wore a wig during his weather forecast. Is, am I right? Yeah. And he got in trouble for it. Well, I, Joe I, was doing the weather, and Paul Long suddenly appeared right in that's front of it, Joe. Paul, the viewers couldn't see it. Uh, that's it. But Paul Long was wearing a blonde you. wig. With a blonde wig. That's what it <laughs> and was. And Joe lost it on and the 
he air. lost it on the air. That's what, and they did get in trouble. I, I, I don't know if it was Franklin Snyder or if it was John. It was Mr. Snyder. It and Joe was said Mr. they went to the office the next day. And Franklin was going <laughs> to give it to him. And Joe came up and put the wig, the wig on. Paul thank said, you. That's what I dealt, had to deal with. And he said, All Ex right, Yeah, exactly. Good. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I remember it was so funny the, um, when, when we had a, a reunion. Uh, in September, 140 people came from all over the country, and Joe was there. And this was l last September, and he was standing there in one place because, you see, Joe had macular degeneration, but he didn't wear his special glasses mm -hmm. when he went out, and someone would bring him in. And we all knew, but no one talked about it. Mm -hmm. He was so amazing mm -hmm. that he walked around like that and never s talked about it. and and. I just call it stoic. And he had, it was like a king with all of these people around him wanting to talk to him who hadn't been around Channel 4 for decades. And he was so happy. So it revered. made him so yeah. pleased that everyone wanted to talk to him because I think he felt that people had forgotten him. And one last thing, uh, 2020 did a special about local weather mm -hmm. and how local weather was the most important thing in, in uh, a newsroom. And they but they had Joe as one of the people, and they had him saying showers and, you know, <laughs> with that Pittsburgh accent that's, that's, that's so wonderful. And I remember being here, the studio didn't look like this, but being standing in the studio, and I was, he was in his weather center, and I was watching, I was like, oh my, Joe's on 2020, Joe's on 2020. And he really just took it in stride, but you knew he was just busting with yeah. pride. He was, just, he was just a remarkable man, and sometimes you'd like to whack him over the head. <laughs> uh, and sometimes you just want to hug him. And uh, like when I, I mean, he wanted to whack me when I spilled coke all over him at Kennywood at the picnic, and he's screaming at me, "Why you always do things like this?" But anyway, that was that was his relationship with everybody. You know, you knew what you got. John is right. He was the same off the air as he was on the air. You knew where you stood with Joe DiNardo. And he continued to care about so many people, calling you know, various people throughout the newsroom, introducing himself as if we didn't recognize his voice. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we certainly think of his family. And Sally, we thank you for your tributes. Um, as we know, I'm your memories stretch, stretch uh, and his, over the years. And his sons have been such a joy to him. Yeah. And I just, uh, his sons and grandchildren, his whole family, I, I, I feel for them. and. Uh, because when a presence like that is gone, yeah. it leaves such a hole. Yeah. Sally, thank you so much. Thanks, Sally. The entire Pittsburgh region, as Sally was saying, is remembering Joe DiNardo. Allegheny County Chief Executive Rich Fitzgerald released a statement saying, in part, every Pittsburgher checked with Joe to decide how to dress, whether to carry an umbrella or to find out if a snow day was in store. And later he wrote, the phrase, Joe said it would, still carries the same weight for Pittsburghers today as it did in the 90s when it was first coined. Also this from Pittsburgh Mayor Bill Peduto, the sun may be shining today, but in the hearts of Pittsburghers, it is partly cloudy and mild, Joe knows. Congressman Keith Rothfuss tweeting, saying that he's immensely saddened by the news that WTAE meteorologist Joe DiNardo, a Pittsburgh legend, passed away. He says, my thoughts and prayers are with his family. And as so many of you know, Joe just wasn't a great meteorologist and a man who gave so much to the community. He was also an incredible family man. We know this because we hear about his lifelong love with his late wife, Dolores, and of course, Joe being a great father to his sons. You know, earlier I spoke to Doug DiNardo, one of Joe's two sons, about his death. Listen. What, of all the love that's being outpoured now uh, for your dad, what do you want our viewers to know about your dad's life that's, that's most important for you? Um, he was a role model that, um, that was sent to me by God, for sure. Um, how to work with family. Um, he was always there for us. Um, how to raise children. Um, he was a he didn't have a father. He was raised by his mother, so he winged it, um, it, it being a father. And um, you take a look at my brother Jeff and, and I and, and uh, you know, all four of the grandkids. Um, he left that legacy. But more than anything, he taught me that um, it, it was just something his grandmother told him, to whom much is given, much is expected. 
He really was Pittsburgh dad to so many of us here at Channel 4 and beyond. Joe really took those words to heart, finding a, a number of ways to help the Pittsburgh area community, treating them as family. The two he'll perhaps be known best for those school visits, inspiring students to take an interest in science and math, making 660 school visits in his career. And of course, Project Bundled Up, a drive that we continue here today at WTAE, working with the Salvation Army to provide warm clothing, especially coats, to those in our community who may not otherwise have a way to stay warm during our cold winters. He did it his way, um, and he did it with um, the, the love and coaching of his mother and his grandmother and his wife, Dolores, and uh, just always give back um, and, and take care of the people that take care of you. Yeah. As we've been mentioning all day long, in addition to his own family, Joe took care of so many other children, 275,000 children throughout Project Bundle Up throughout the past 32 years. WTA's Project Bundle Up was a concept that Joe helped develop, keeping children and seniors warm during those cold winter months, as Mike mentioned. Pittsburgh's Action News full reporter Sheldon Ingram is bringing us more about that and one of Joe's other big accomplishments in the town he called home. Moon Park is one of Joe DiNardo's most proud accomplishments. They even named the main road after him, Joe DiNardo Way. But his other proud accomplishment is Project Bundle Up. Joe DiNardo was the face of Project Bundle Up. He started out by lending a helping hand to Pat Rooney, the widow of the late Pittsburgh Steelers owner, Dan Rooney. She approached WTAE about a charitable coat drive for children in the 1980s. When DiNardo heard about it, he jumped in. The signature events for Project Bundle Up were the telethons and the shopping outing for children to get new coats. I think it was meaningful to Joe because he would come shopping at, at the beginning and he would get to meet these children. He would interview them. You know, they were all thrilled. Mrs. Rooney says Donardo gave Project Bundle Up a face and widespread popularity. I don't think there was anything phony about Joe. I think this is very meaningful to him. I really did get that impression. Donardo was also the founder of the Parks and Recreation Board for Moon Township during the 1960s. He also spearheaded the creation of Moon Park. Mrs. Rooney says he appeared just as genuine off camera as he did on television. He was just a very humane person and I'm going to miss him and I give condolences to his family. Donato's family says in lieu of flowers, they asked the public to make donations to Project Bundle Up through the Salvation Army. In Moon Township, Sheldon Ingram, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. And as Sheldon mentioned, Moon Township was home for Joe and his late wife Dolores for so many years. Yeah, and as Sheldon touched upon, we're going to talk a little more about his chairing of the Township's Parks and Recreation Board for 24 years. In 2012, Township Supervisors gave Joe the honor. Sheldon pointed out the road that was renamed for Joe. And it's true, Joe DiNardo Way leads right into Moon Park. And after the dedication ceremony six years ago, our Sally Wigan decided to have a little fun with Joe about that big honor. You have to plow this and keep it clean when it snows. That's not a problem. You really would do it? Absolutely, because I know what the weather's going to be. I'll know when to get here and when not to. It's all about families. Joe planned m many of the parks in Moon. By the way, the Moon Park office is located along Joe DiNardo Way. We definitely have to keep talking about this, Joe's school visits. Joe did more than 600 in all. And that's what so many of you at home are talking about throughout the day. We've been hearing so many of your stories about Joe's school visits, those helicopter landings <laughs> right outside the buildings. Pittsburgh's Action News full reporter Jackie Kane takes a look. It was that feeling of excitement for so many kids who grew up in and around the Pittsburgh area watching Joe DiNardo land that helicopter at your school. I was six years old when he landed here at Central Elementary School, and so many people have been sharing their memories with us today. They all wore hats. One had a cloud or a sun, a rainbow, things like that. But they were very excited, and I do recall them asking some really good questions. Teresa Gephardt's children were at Elizabeth Forward's Green Oak Elementary School back in the early 90s when Joe DiNardo flew in for a stop. She was the president of the PTA and was in charge of planning it. Knowing that he was Italian, I'm Italian, I was, had to be sure that he had a good meal. Gephardt says she and her sister cooked lasagna and wedding soup for Joe. He thoroughly enjoyed it, came over, 
and was shaking our hand and told us how delicious it was and that the wedding soup was some of the best that he had ever had. So we were very honored by that. Joe said it. Joe said it would. Aaron Honick was a student at Mount Vernon Elementary when Joe visited his school. To lose a legacy like that, it's, it's a sad day, but the, the fact that there's not a cloud in the sky and the sun is shining, Joe's shining down on us today. He's shining down on Pittsburgh. Jackie Kane, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. One of the more memorable images of Joe arriving at those school visits in Sky 4. We caught up with a former Sky 4 pilot who spent many years flying Joe to those visits. There'd be a fire truck there, maybe, or they'd, they'd always make plans to make sure everything was okay. But Joe always got a kick out of uh, being able to get in and out of the schools because he just he loved to go visit the kids. I mean, and uh, and the the photogs and the announcers that went with us were uh, just spectacular over the years. You know, like I said, I uh, I enjoyed every one of them. Ed says he flew Joe and Sky 4 for more than 16 years. He joked that when Joe retired that they couldn't sell the helicopter because the school visits left it with an overwhelming smell of cake from all the cakes Joe brought back to our newsroom after those school visits. You know, since we're talking about Joe's visits and his cakes, take a look at this. Joanne Krutzberger, Withrow, sharing this photo with us on Facebook, saying that this was the cake she made for Joe's school visit to East Pike Elementary School in Indiana. She said the little figure was a groom that she painted to look like Joe. So many of you continue to share your memories of Joe like this. This from Christine Killemeyer, who says that she vividly remembers when he came to her school in the third grade, her elementary school, wearing their orange Mount View pride shirts. And in true Joe DiNardo fashion, he arrived in the helicopter to a rock star's welcome, where the kids all sang a special song composed just for Joe. And she added that that song is why she still knows how to spell meteorologist <laughs> to this very day. Within the halls of WTAE, there are so many memories of Joe DiNardo, stories that will be told for years and years to come. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Bob Mayo spoke with our co-workers, both past and present, about Joe's legacy. We've been talking with WTAE co-workers, past and present, friends and colleagues of Joe DiNardo about his passing. Among them, former WTAE sports director Bill Hillgrove. It's a sad day. Uh, I lost a good friend, a colleague, and certainly uh, the best weather prognosticator in the history of the game. And I'm accepting Phil Punxsutawney Phil from that. Uh, Joe was, he made it a delight to walk in the front door. And uh, the banter between himself and Paul Long and Don Cannon and Sally Wigan and all the sports guys, you know, it was pretty special. Former WTAE news director Joe Rovito was Joe DiNardo's boss for years, but grew up watching Joe and describes him as like a father figure. His memories on Joe's passing. The first thing that came to my mind is what a force he is. It was. I mean, Joe DiNardo walked in the room. It was like a tornado walking in the room. You know, I always, <laughs> I always said that one of the reasons he was so accurate with the weather is because he didn't predict the weather. He told the weather what to do, <laughs> and the weather listened to him. We also talked with two retired WTAE photographers who were eyes and ears for all of us for Joe's forecasts, school visits, and Project Bundle Up projects. Joe always treated everyone with respect as an equal. Never talked down to anybody. Um, he was just, he loved socializing with people. He did it so well. He always respected everyone. He always showed profound respect for people, no matter what their station in life was. WTAE friends and colleagues remembering Joe DiNardo. On Mount Washington, Bob Mayo, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Thank you, Bob. Another past WTAE employee we caught up with is our former assistant news director, John Poister, who has memories of Joe from more than three decades ago. Well, I came to Channel 4 in 1979, and there wasn't a computer in the building. And of course, now the weather is all done by computers. And Joe was one of the first meteorologists, I think, anywhere to have a, a printer from the Weather Service where he got satellite maps, really primitive satellite maps, and he would study those like a surgeon preparing for an operation. He would be preparing for the weather forecast. John Poister, you may know, went on to other news positions and went on to be a spokesman for Pennsylvania's Department of Environmental Protection. 
Joe wasn't just a fixture here at WTAE. He was a fixture for the city of Pittsburgh. He loved Pittsburgh and its surrounding communities, and he was the ideal person to talk to as part of Chronicle, a point of pride. We spoke to Joe about the legacy of Pittsburgh's famous fountain. Take a look. To me, uh, it probably means much more. It's different than what most people would think. I look at this place here and the fountain behind me like a beautiful lady. Uh, something that's shining on her, shining on the property here, and with a sunny sky that acts as a uh, light to show all of her beauty. Then at night, especially in the summertime, on a warm, clear night with the lights around the fountain and the fountain itself. It's uh, like a formal wear at night and she's wearing something to go out for a night of entertainment. And then all of a sudden, Mother Nature doesn't like what's going on. And before you know it, Hurricane Agnes arrives back in 1972. And take a look at this. In the middle of our interview for Chronicle, some fans actually stopped by and wanted a picture with Joe, and it just speaks to how gracious he is. He stopped the interview and was able to greet fans and take pictures and sign autographs and talk with them a little bit about the weather. In the nearly 60 years WTA has been on the air, one of the most legendary duos was, of course, anchorman Paul Long and meteorologist Joe DiNardo. And the two just didn't just have great chemistry on the air. They were truly friends in real life as well. And like many friends, they like to play jokes on one another. You heard Sally talk about that earlier. Or we should say Joe liked to play jokes on Paul. <laughs> like this one, Paul Long always left his keys in his car, so one night... Joe used those keys to hide the car, as Sally talked about. Take a listen. I see him walking up and down the parking lot. And I said, oh, my God, I forgot. So I went, I said, Paul, what are you doing? I'm looking for my car. I said, well, you always leave the keys in the car. Somebody probably stole it. No, they didn't. He goes back down. In, I said, it's probably in the lower lot. Well, he goes down to the lower lot, and I immediately run up to the back here, start his car, bring it down, and put it right in front of the building, and come back. And I said, Paul, what's this? He looks and he says, I must have missed it. <laughs> he got in the car, started it, it and took off. <laughs> Paul Long retired from WTA in December 1994. He passed away in 2002. There is one thing that you and I both know, Joe. You'll have a lot of time to play a lot of golf, and, you know, you may end up giving me strokes. The late golfing legend from Latrobe, Westmoreland County, Arnold Palmer, sending his well wishes to Joe upon his retirement. The pair of icons shared a passion for both golf and giving back to their communities during their lifetimes. As you may remember, Joe beat lung cancer. He had been a smoker, and the tumor they found was not the average tumor. It was a very tough cancer fight and it would not be a simple surgery. Well, we caught up with the man who treated Joe. Dr. Jim Lukatich was not a native Pittsburgher, but as he tells us, he quickly learned the enormity of the situation. I was relatively new to Pittsburgh, just gotten here from, from Memorial Sloan Kettering and new kid on the block, and I said, well, okay, I'd be happy to see whoever it is. Uh, and then they said, well, this is Joe DiNardo. I said, oh, I said, uh, okay, I knew that name, and it, it, it rang a bell with my wife, who's a Pittsburgher, and she said, wow, you better take good care of this guy. Joe would go on to battle cancer two more times and undergo more operations. By the end of it all, he became an advocate not just for cancer patients, but really for all patients. Earlier in this hour, we introduced you to John G. Kotomikes, the former WTAE president and general manager who hired Joe DiNardo. And how Joe joined WTA is a story that will continue to be told for years to come. Take a look. And for all the news, sports and weather. In the 1970s, the name Paul Long, Don Cannon, and Joe DiNardo came to personify Action News. But there was a fourth man whose name you shouldn't forget, John G. Conomikes, the man who assembled that legendary news team. And it all started with a conversation with Paul Long. He asked me what, uh, what ideas I had. Well, I said, uh, I'd like to see your weatherman be uh, Joe DiNardo. I think he could be had now. 
or words to that effect. But uh, he says, we've been talking to him. He's playing hard to get. And I gave him some more tips on how to tie the rope around Donardo and drag him in here feet first. Joe worked for another television station at the time, but that didn't stop the two from arranging a meeting in 1969. John G. Conamite. And he said, I want to talk to you. I said, fine. He said, uh, let's meet out near the airport. He said, you know any place? I said, yeah, we'll meet at Hard Johnson. So we met at Hard Johnson's. And we're sitting there talking, having a nice conversation, and uh, pilots from the airport would be going by, coming in for lunch, breakfast, what have you. And they'd all stop. Donardo says, great job, great job. He says, you're the only weather we watch. He says, you tell it like it is. He says, it's all about that. Winds aloft, the whole ball. And after a while, Connor Mike, he looks at me and he said, I think I'm being set up. <laughs> when we spoke to him several years back, Mr. Connor Mike said he remembers another pilot. A pilot came in and said to Joe, he says, my God, Joe, he says, that weather. He says, what kind of weather do you need to fly in? It was absolutely awful out there. And Joe said, well, for me to fly, he says, I'll tell you what I do. I said, I've got a powder blue piece of paper with a hole in the middle. And he says, and I go outside and I hold it against the sky. If it matches, I fly. If it doesn't, I don't go in the air. And I said, and you're a guy that I want to give a lot of money to come and work at Channel 4. That's the kind of answers we get. But, uh, you know, that was the start of it. And later, the phone call that led to an unconventional contract. I called John. I said, uh, John? He said, yeah, what's happening? I said, I need a job. He said, meet me at Polize at noon. So I met him at Polize at noon. We sat down at noon, had lunch, and on a white linen napkin, laid out a five-year contract. And uh, he signed it, I signed it. And I said, uh, Larry, Larry Polize. I said, Larry, come here a minute. And he said, what? I said, would you mind witnessing this? And Connor Mike said, you don't have to witness that. He said, I said, I said, you could get hit by a truck. I said, or I could. I said, no one will ever know. And, this 500 millibar and with that, a new a era in Pittsburgh television began. So we went on, I think it was the first Monday in May and, uh, of 1970. And there was a big promotional campaign, Long, Donardo, and so forth. And I thought, man, oh man, if this doesn't work, not only am I in trouble and Long's in trouble, but what is it going to do to Connor Mike's? You know, I was scared to death the first night. I said, this is a big deal. And we went on the air, and then uh, the rest was history. Two broadcasting icons right there. You know, we have to talk about this, Janelle. One of the more memorable weather events for Joe DiNardo was definitely the most memorable for all of us here in Pittsburgh, the blizzard of 93. Yeah, this past March actually marked 25 years since that monster storm and what would turn out to be one of his final interviews. Joe DiNardo spoke with Pittsburgh's Action News for Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey about the memories of that storm and some other key weather events right here in Pittsburgh. Joe said it would, and it did. March 13th, 1993. It was a pretty good storm. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's been the biggest one day total in the history of Pittsburgh. The blizzard of 1993, nearly two feet of snow falling in a single day. Joe DiNardo was WTAE's chief meteorologist and the dean of weather forecasting for decades. He tells me that the blizzard was perhaps one of the most memorable weather events he covered. I was doing a pretty big hit every 30 minutes mm -hmm. and uh, telling people what the rate of accumulation per hour was and you know hey don't bother going out there and shoveling right. you're just going to go back out in another two hours shovel another six inches joe was amazed by what he saw that day including the decision to continue pittsburgh's annual saint patrick's day parade i know the irish liked it they had a very nice parade that day, yeah. and they were walking in the snow. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Okay. For hours he tracked the blizzard until the moment the snow finally came to an end, a moment he had forecast predicting 9.30 p.m. I'll never forget it, Mike. I'm looking at the sequences coming in. Special, Greater Pit, 9.32, snow ended. I'll never forget it. It ended at 9.32. Yeah. And that was it. Joe saying he worked hard to accurately deliver the forecast to Pittsburgh. If I was going to be wrong, I wasn't going to let a model make me wrong. Mm -hmm. It was going to be my forecast. Right. But 
this was so big that I wasn't worried about it at all. I knew we were going to get one, yeah. especially with a closed low, 500 millibars. That's all you need in Pittsburgh. Right. And that's what we got. And once it was over, Joe had another dilemma to face, how to get home with the parkways closed. And I called the state police who patrol it, told him of my predicament. He said, where do you live? Joe? I said, out in Moon. He said, you're going to be in a, a monitored uh, vehicle. I said, yeah. I said, we're going to be in a station vehicle. He says, go ahead, I'll tell him. So we drove home. All these years later, Joe left with so many memories, memories of a storm that shut down Pittsburgh. It was a great storm to work, though, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I really did. Because yeah. I had a great handle on it. Like everything, he had a great handle on everything in his life. The blizzard of 93 was just one of several memorable weather events that Joe covered. Another big one was Hurricane Ivan back in 2004. You'll recall the remnants from that storm brought severe flooding to so many parts of Pittsburgh, including Millvale and Etna. Joe recalled when he first got a sense that it was going to be a huge weather event. It was about noontime, and I came into the uh, newsroom. Went up to the news director. I said, we got a problem. He said, what's that? I said, you know how you always want me to go on the air? And I said, I don't have anything to say going early. I said, on the news? I said, well, today I've got something to say. So what's the matter? I said, we're going to get so much rain. We've never had this much rain before in the history of Pittsburgh. The remnants of Hurricane Ivan dropped 11 inches of rain on Pittsburgh in just 36 hours. And though he had a reputation for accurate weather forecasts, believe it or not, Joe's record wasn't perfect, as Paul Long once pointed out after he went against his better judgment one fourth of July. So I put out partly cloudy, 75 degrees. But I'm looking at this thing and I said, oh, I said, ah, we'll go partly cloudy, 75. The next day, Paul Long says to me, congratulations, I had one and a half inches of partly cloudy land on my driveway, and we had an inch and a half of rain that day. I'll never forget it. That was the biggest bomb I ever had, I think. They never let you forget that? Never, never. <laughs> Of course, despite that mist storm, Joe maintained a legendary record for accuracy. And someone who's been very close with Joe is, of course, Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist, Mike Carvey. We know so many times he's been calling the newsroom. He'll call yeah. the Weather Center and keep in touch with all of you. Yeah, he's kept in touch over the years, and he's called the uh, weather office frequently. <laughs> <laughs> he always was touching base, you know. Of course, yeah. he would call when we had uh, big weather events that were coming in, and just kind of to compare notes and kind of stay in the game. And that was a lot of fun, because, of course, Joe was pretty accurate, so it was good <laughs> to get his assistance on uh, different uh, storms that were coming into town. But mainly Joe was calling you know, just to talk about families and uh, what was you know happening with you. He always asked about your kids and what they were doing, what events they were doing, and, and that was always nice. He was always very, very genuine about that. Ask about the wife and and ask about what they were what they were doing. So he always had questions about that, and he always just cared and kept in touch, mm -hmm. which was which was so very nice. The other thing about Joe. I, mean, I don't know if it's been said, but, you know, Joe, through the years, you know, I mean, he started at the beginning of television, you know, he was on film, and that was back when we had, like, Velcro that was going up on, uh, <laughs> on weather maps, and we had, uh, you know, we were just drawing on maps and stuff like that. Then we finally really advanced and got to magnets. You can see some of these right here. That's pretty advanced right there <laughs> from where he started. And then we finally went to uh, something like this that... Uh, I have in my hand is uh, called DIFAX charts. Uh, you heard in one story before about the primitive charts that mm -hmm. uh, were sent for the National Weather Service. Well, we keep these back in the uh, weather office. Uh, just remember Joe and remember uh, what it was like uh, back in the old days before computers. Mm -hmm. And now we finally went on to computers, but Joe stayed in the game so long that, of course, he finished up with the uh, computers. And, and I also have to say something about Project Bundle Up. You know, yeah. we all had a chance to uh, be with Joe and Project Bundle Up, and he started that back in 1986. And since then, $14.1 million has been. I mean, that's just amazing. What yeah. a legacy to leave. $14.1 million, 275,000 kids have stayed warm in the winter in western Pennsylvania because of what he started. And uh, with Fred Barber here, the GM here at the uh, station. So it was uh, pretty amazing what he did there with that. And I just have one more thing I've, I've got to touch on. We've been talking about the schools he went to, over 600 schools that he visited. Well, I visit the schools now and I go out there. And uh, it is amazing how many schools I go to. And I talk to the teachers, and the teachers tell me their story of when Joe DiNardo landed in the helicopter 
uh, at their school, and they really remember it uh, fondly. And just about every school I go to, um, they have teachers there that talk about that. And you continue that legacy of bringing mm -hmm. science yeah. and fun and education to the kids, and mm -hmm. we all uh, will plan to honor his commitment to Project Bundle Up, is helping yes. so many people in the Pittsburgh area. As someone we all look up to, and yeah. uh, you have pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's big shoes to fill, but, uh, you know, definitely uh, proud to uh, be yeah. here, and uh, yeah. uh, certainly he left a big legacy. Yeah. Right. Thank Mike. you so Thanks. much for sharing your memories, Mike. And memories of Joe DiNardo really are coming in from all across the area, not just here in Pittsburgh, but all across the country. That's right, including from a meteorologist who looked to Joe as a mentor, former Pittsburgh's action weather meteorologist, Demetrius Ivory. He's working in Chicago now, but wanted to take a moment today to send this message to us here in Pittsburgh. Hey everyone, Demetrius Ivory coming to you from Chicago. I'd like to offer my condolences to the DiNardo family and to everyone back in Pittsburgh and of course our WTAE family, uh, uh, we suffered a great loss. Joe DiNardo was a legend. He was not just a mentor, he was also a friend to me and uh, we spent a lot of uh, great time throughout the years. My favorite memory of Joe actually doesn't have to do with forecasting. He would call me every day in the studio and we'd talk for sometimes hours, sometimes uh, too long and I couldn't get ready for the noon show. Uh, mostly about sports so sometimes I would go down to his house and we watch college sports and we would just be him and hawing and saying good and bad things about the Pittsburgh Panthers throughout the entire afternoon you know just he and I so um, you know he was just a great man he got his start here in Chicago of course this is where he went to school always supportive and uh, we are going to miss you so much Joe so to my great friend and to everyone back in Pittsburgh uh, just rest in peace, Joe, and I will never forget the things that you taught me. Talked to Demetrius on the way in, and he was making sure that he wanted to know about the funeral arrangements. And he is uh, a perfect example of the kind of person that Joe continued to mentor. Absolutely. Whether it was a, a student in grade school or high school, or someone who worked here and continued to go on, Joe shared his knowledge, and so many people were so grateful for that. Yeah, it's so beautiful to hear Demetrius' uh, memories of Joe and what the importance you know he played in his life. And you know, so many of you have been talking about this since we broke the news of Joe's passing earlier this morning here. Those promos that made Joe DiNardo so famous. Yeah, they were much more than just the words Joe said it would. There were decades of creative spots pointing out Joe's accurate forecasts. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 anchor Michelle Wright takes a closer look. Years, forecasting weather in Pittsburgh came down to four little words. Joe said it would was more than a catchphrase. It was the promise of accurate forecasts from a man who spent decades analyzing the weather in Pittsburgh. And while those spots are undeniably iconic, they're not the only promos that featured the legendary Joe DiNardo. There were so many more, including this spot that highlights the chemistry of the WTAE on-air team in the 70s. The most continually asked question still is, what do Paul Long, Don Cannon, Joe DiNardo, and Ed Conway say to each other following the newscast? We once again join the closing credits in progress to seek the answer. Paul, did you get that call from your wife? No, what'd she say? Joe took the message. Uh, she wants you to pick up a can of hairspray for her. <laughs> Spots that didn't just showcase great chemistry, but also great humor. The woolly caterpillar predicted the hard winter, the groundhog the early spring. Personally, I prefer groundhogs, but sometimes you have to take what you can get. Here's Joe DiNardo. Well, Mr. Long, you prefer groundhogs, I prefer caterpillars. Really, it all depends on how you cook them. Other spots demonstrated what to expect from the newscasts, while more showcased Joe's weather expertise in some creative ways, like this spot from the mid-70s. There's something almost frightening about the accuracy of Joe Donato's forecasts. It does make you wonder sometimes just how he does it. But for so many, it comes back to those four words that said so much about what to expect when you tuned in to a Donato weather forecast. Michelle Wright, Pittsburgh's Action News 4.
All right, thank you, Michelle. We know Joe was such an inspiration for young, aspiring meteorologists that was very evident here in this photo and story shared by Joshua Fosbrink, who says this was from when he got to greet Joe on a visit to Southmoreland schools. He said Joe kept in contact with him through college, and he's now been in the meteorology field for 15 years and even visits schools himself now. That's great. And right now we want to bring in Pittsburgh's Action News 4 anchor, Andrew Stocky. Andrew, you've been here 23, almost 24 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are your memories of Joe when you first started here? Well, I have to tell you, when I first came here, I had not been to Pittsburgh. So I walked in and saw this Denardo weather. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> I had no idea. But Joe and I shared two things together over the years. First of all, our passion for golf. We both love golf. In fact, I remember one time he hosted that tournament up at St. Mary's, which was quite a drive. Asked me to play in it, and I told him, look, I couldn't make it because obviously I had to work that evening. Mm -hmm. He's like, don't worry, I'll sit in the helicopter. <laughs> so Ed killed Kenny in the helicopter. I met them at the helipad with my golf clubs, hopped on, flew all the way up, <laughs> landed off the green, off the putting green, and Joe was there to greet me. I have to tell you, I felt like a million dollars. Didn't play like a million dollars, but certainly felt like it. I mean, Joe, that's the kind of person he was. He would go that length to make sure you could take part in events like that. Yeah. The second passion we had was for fashion. If you've seen all the video today, you know he was a sharp dressed man. Yeah. Yeah. The cuff links, the suit was perfectly. Uh, suited for him. Mm -hmm. He looked great. And he and I kind of went back and forth. He kind of got me into the whole dressing thing. <laughs> in fact, we also bo lo both love those wild ties in the 1990s. <laughs> and we went to the kind of the same store to get those ties. And he always got first dibs <laughs> because he was Joe DiNardo. But he taught me in that a couple of things. First of all, dress for not only the job you want, but the job you have. Always look presentable. That was him. Wherever he went, he looked the part. He looked good. He exuded professionalism. Yeah. And that's something that I think really rubbed off on me. And the second thing I always remember is the fact that he gave back. I mean, he really made a difference. And inspired not just myself, but all of us here at WTA to try to do our best to give something back to the community that has given us so much. So that's the legacy. I think we talked about a bit earlier today. You know, do something today or this weekend with Joy in mind. Volunteer and give back because it's the best tribute I think we can pay to a man who gave so much of himself. To all of us. Very well said. And it wasn't just about how he looked and his mm. work here, as we know, mm. it was how he treated people. Yeah. And we heard so many of our co workers talk about that. You know, he had that legendary status here at work. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I started, it was right after the Ivan floods. And, uh, you know, he was front and center, but, you know, mm. took the time to encourage all of us. And he never really took a day off even after he yeah. retired because he would, he would call us in the newsroom. <laughs> yeah. And oh, he would true. always call the sports department. Yeah. It, yeah. Except he would ask me questions. <laughs> yes. Instead of suggesting, things yes. and say, so who's playing in this game? What's going on in this contest? We yes. would always talk sports. Then we would talk about family and life. You always said, how are you doing? Are they treating you well? Is everything good? Yeah. Uh, it was like having a father figure, yeah. somebody you could really look up to and, and kind of bounce things off of. So uh, I'm going to miss his phone calls. I got the last one, I think, about a week and a half ago. Yeah. I'm sorry, a month and a half ago, excuse me. And uh, uh, it's, it's hard to believe I'm not going to get those phone calls anymore because they came out of the blue. And yeah. when they happened, you took that phone call and you dropped everything you were doing. That's true. Thank you so much, Andrew, for sharing your, your memories, as many of you are doing. And likely one of those highlights of Joe's career that we've, keep, we've, we've been talking about all night was the moment he received the Governor's Award from the Mid-Atlantic Emmys. It was an emotional night for Joe. It was an award honoring his years of excellence on television and his service to our community. Take a look now at some of Joe's acceptance speech that night when he received that award. This lifelong journey has surrounded me with friends that I've worked with, day after day, year after year. I've been a very blessed individual. And all I can say is that the WTAE family will help me in this award and they'll help me celebrate this award when we get back because these are true friends. To the Board of Governors, I just have to, I, I must thank you from the bottom of my heart. You've made an old man proud, happy, and humble. Thank you so very much for this award. Lots of precipitation in that room that evening. Some other past recipients of the Board of Directors Governor's Award include Fred Rogers, Myron Cope, and our own Sally Wigan, who received the award just last year. And just a short time ago, the Mid-Atlantic chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences released a statement saying they're saddened by Joe's passing, describing him as a broadcast legend who will be missed by all. 
All day long, we've been hearing so many wonderful stories about Joe DiNardo from his service to the community to his reputation as a practical joker. He changed the way weather is forecasted here in Pittsburgh, and in one way you might not expect. So you all probably know meteorologists stand right in front of that green screen for their forecasts. Well, at least at one point in time in his career here at WTAE, that screen was blue, something Joe didn't want. Take a listen. They started blue. And that just bugged me when I found out you could use green. I said, why don't you use green? They said, why? I said, because I don't wear green shirt or shoes. I don't wear them. So they started using green, and that was a little easier. We told you he had a lot of pull. And one of the many ways Joe's planted a flag on what came to now be known as the Joe DiNardo Weather Center. Joe DiNardo was well known for his practical jokes. He was all much loved in the community. And when you put the two and two together, you get moments like this one. A 4th of July, when Joe and Bill Hillgrove had to work here at the 6 o'clock news, and then they decided to find a picnic to crash. One day I said, Billy, come on, we're going to do something. He said, what? We get in my car and we're cruising down Hardmore Boulevard in Forest Hill. Took a right and go up on the hill there and there's all these homes up there. And Put the window down. I said, now, Billy, if you smell something that smells really good, let me know. So we get in Joe's car. He drives down to Swissville. We drive along. We see a tent in a yard and cars parked. We get out of the car. Hey, Joe DiNardo, Bill Hillgrove, come on. And we enjoyed a spectacular cookout. And guess what? It didn't cost us a dime. I bet it didn't. <laughs> the very first time I met Joe DiNardo, he said, where, do you, where are you going to live? I said, uh, Forest Hills. He said, best barbecues in Pittsburgh. And he, he told me that story. <laughs> you know, as you remember our friend Joe DiNardo tonight, we're also thinking about the impact he left on our community. And sometimes that impact came with a little bit of humor, as we've been talking about, such as in this famous clip from Pittsburgh Dad. It's over. Sometimes as late as June. Remember, Joe said it would, or Joe DiNardo did a cannonball in it. Joe DiNardo found multiple snowflakes exactly the same. Joe DiNardo named his fists Arctic Blast. Got birth certificates. Blowing snow. And the folks over at Pittsburgh Dad did send us a message offering their condolences on the loss of Joe DiNardo. And this is something we're really going to miss when WTA Summerfest returns next month. You know, Joe loved the people of Pittsburgh, and every year he had the chance to meet with them one on one at WTA's Kennywood Day. Hey, come on out! It's going to be a great day! Now, that initial video was from 1985, but Joe continued to come to the parade for years and years. Here's a shot of him back in 2016 when we all posed for a picture with him, always waving to the crowd that was so excited to see that he would come out to greet them. And we also want to share this, a tweet from Joe DiNardo's grandson, also named Joe. He posted it with a caption that reads, probably my favorite picture of the big guy. What do you get a man for Christmas that has everything? This T-shirt, of course, says, as on TV. <laughs> and before we say goodnight tonight, we want to remind all of you about the funeral arrangements for Joe. That's right. They've been released, and visitation will be held Monday and Tuesday from 2 to 4, and then from 6 to 8 at Huntsman Funeral Home. That's on Coriopolis Heights Road in Moon Township. Joe's funeral mass will be celebrated Wednesday morning at 10 at St. Margaret Mary Church in Moon. And in lieu of flowers, the family is suggesting donations in Joe's name the WT's Project Bundle Up. Very emotional night for all of us. I know, Mike, you came in early this morning to yeah. greet the news. We just found out this morning, and uh, it's been overwhelming to hear about the impact. And frankly, it's uh, an inspiration to all of us. Yeah. As we have many more years to come, hopefully in this business and in this community, we hope to be able to have such a lasting impact that he has had. And from all of us here at Pittsburgh's Action News 4, we thank all of you who reached out today to offer your condolences for his family who we know are watching. We are thinking of his family right now and all throughout this weekend in honor of Joe's commitment to community. We here at WTAE are asking you to do one random act of kindness, volunteer, or donate to charity in Joe's name. Please use the hashtag do good for Donardo and be sure to share your memories in our condolence book online at WTAE.com. And we'll continue to follow the stories of his legacy and his impact of Pittsburgh as he's remembered in the days and weeks to come. Thank you and have a good night. Chilly out there this evening, but the good news is it's a dry one out there. Joe didn't give you percentages. Joe said it would or it wouldn't. It was a pretty good storm. In fact, it's been the biggest one-day total in the history of Pittsburgh.
the, the fact that there's not a cloud in the sky and the sun is shining, Joe's shining down on us today. I want to thank you, our viewers, for inviting me into your home for all these many years. It's been a pleasure servicing you, and I hope the forecast we gave you were as accurate as it could be. I know we tried hard to do that, but thanks for your confidence for all these years.